So I'm making a second video on this uh, old 1970-ish Kubota two-cylinder L260 tractor. <coughs> it's a two-cylinder diesel non-turbo Z1300 engine with a Nippon Denso uh, Bosch style piston pump. Zero nine zero 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 three five eight two is the uh, pump part number. P E S two A. That's what it is. It's a P E S two A Bosch pump. Anyhow, kind of a weird setup. I had all kinds of trouble with low power and this and that, and a constant billowing of white smoke, and I couldn't stand it no more. And I finally pulled the pump, and uh, the injection. Well, didn't pull it. I spill port timed it, and the timing was just so far out of whack <clears throat> now I've heard of people injecting air into the you know fuel system into the fuel gallery low pressure gallery to uh, you gotta pull the delivery valve you gotta pull the delivery valve holder there's a spring and then the delivery valve which is nothing special to it there's your DV right there that'll seat downward and a spring sets on top which is just that spring there. <clears throat> Anyhow, I had pulled my injectors out, which I've had everything on this fuel system part until I pulled the pump. So I I pulled the injectors out, pulled the lines off, and I mounted the lines on, hung them out backwards, and I put the injectors into the lines and cranked the tractor over to look at the injection. The injection looked great, and it's a pre-chamber injection anyway, so it's not even it doesn't even need to be a mist. It's a big shot into a pre-cup. With a you know the glow plug sitting there and the pre cup is inside. Anyhow, <clears throat> these tractors have a. So obviously it's nighttime here. Kids are sleeping. The manual on these is extremely vague. You know all it tells you is that you got to look in this little window for some timing marks and none of it makes sense. Nothing lines up. Uh, so I got sick and tired of it, and I just found TDC on piston number one on the compression stroke <clears throat> by there's your exhaust valves are on the outside your intake valves are on the inner there's your intake pipe and you know, your exhaust manifold assignees so all I did was just take the intake since I didn't want to bend an exhaust it's easier to burn an exhaust so I backed off the lash nut I actually took the lash nut off cranked the intake down until it compressed the spring to make a piston stop and with no it's easy to roll the motor over by hand off the fan carefully don't snap the fins off because they're pretty old so I just rolled the motor over by hand until I came to the piston you know you can feel the piston touch the valve and I put a mark just right here where I could see it I made my pointer first so just a yellow paint mark there yellow paint mark there just a good line of sight and then I put a mark. So that was the first point. And then the second, you know, you gotta back the valve off and roll it over and come at it from the other side. You cannot just keep rolling because the cam will try to compress, you know, the cam will come around and try to crush the piston into the valve. You have to be very gentle, no wrenches. So you roll it over and you piston stop it on the other side and you mark it. And then halfway in between, is your TDC. So when I looked at the spill port, I mean, I was nowhere near this. I mean, I was like on the other side of the, like 180 out at least. <clears throat> so I finally pulled the pump and those timing marks inside. When you look, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pull it back off. Actually, yeah, I will. It's pretty easy to do. I think I can do it one-handed now. Oh, by the way, you have to pull the drain tube to get the thing off and get the flashlight. I had to pull the, to make room for my hands, I had to pull the uh, glow plug, two, two of the glow plug wires, I just swung them up. All of the fuel connections and stuff, obviously. And the drain line, there's a banjo bolt right there, that had to go 
to get to the bottom stud, which they're not sticking out right now, but <clears throat> and then I had to come from the back with like come from the back right here with a ratchet and a couple swivels. I had to break it loose with a, a box wrench and then a couple swivels and I was uh or extensions, wobble extensions and one wobble socket. I was able to get that off and I had to pull two screws and a cap that sits over that stud to make clearance right here. Once I did that, it was all pretty easy. Just pops right out. Okay. Now, there's a mark. Right there. And then, there's a mark right there. You're not going to be able to position the pump wherever you want it. Because it's the springs are going to tell the cam, you know, the cam is going to try to compress the springs and it's going to roll wherever it wants. So what you do is just set the pump where that tooth is happy, up straight-ish, and then just roll the motor. <laughs> and uh, get that slit in there, and you're good to go. Now, you got to double check that you get your timing right, which right now I'm off a tooth. I'm going to roll that up, and I'm going to roll this back, So, pump just dropped in. <clears throat> I just rolled the motor back. You, you can see the lines. So I just rolled the motor back off the fan until it engaged. You know, it's a six spline little hub. But now you gotta check and see spill port timing. And rather than pumping fuel and air and all that, I just put a rubber hose on top. Remember, there's no delivery valve. I just put a clean piece of vinyl tubing on top so I can blow through it. Okay, so the spill port is exposed when you can hear air, but as soon as that air airflow stops, you know that the injection event has begun because the spill port is blocked and now pressure rise and the injection event will unseat the delivery valve and, and start rising pressure in the injection pipe. So <clears throat> we're looking to see where does, we want 20 degrees before top dead center, 20 degrees ejection advance on this L260 model. So all I gotta do is roll this motor again while blowing through that pipe and uh, whenever it stops that's the mark where injection begins. That's it. I'm going to back up to it again a little bit. That's it. Exactly. And the good news is my little pointer indicates that it's fallen right about where I need it to be. I can change, you know, you can roll the pump a little physically to, to adjust it for fine tune. And that's, uh, that's all there is to it. I had a ton of white smoke and a uh, loss of power. <clears throat> I had already checked my overflow valve, which is right here. This is a there's your, by the way, this is a cap for your rack. So this is your fuel rack. That's your shutdown. This is your shutdown position on your shutdown rod. And this is your throttle control through the governor. You can't move the rack with that lever. So in case you get your rods mixed up, the one that gives you mechanical control, that is your kill switch, you know, your shut off. And this is your foot pedal throttle. Your rack is in here. And do not fool with these. Do not fool with these screws right here. That needs to be set by a pump shop. 
but this cap here you can take off, no problem. And if there's a bunch of goop in it, that could be freezing and hanging up your rack in the winter. Uh, this is just an air plug for bleeding the system. Uh, very good fuel system on this, very, very easy to prime. Probably the easiest I've ever dealt with. And your overflow valve is in here. It's just a spring with a little ball seat check valve thingy. It just, it just keeps pressure in the, in the galley, feed galley. And uh, the return line back to tank goes right there. You're supposed to have 18 pounds of pressure on these. If you're low, which I was at 11, I stretched the spring and I got it to about 15. But you could shim it or put a pen spring or whatever you want to do. I, I put a gauge. Somebody else put a different fuel filter, but I, I put a gauge on so I could watch it. I was thinking that I had a lift, a lift pump issue, and uh, I didn't. By the way, you need to drain the fuel. You need to check the oil in your governor and in your pump all the time and you have to drain it and I had to actually poke a hole through the sludge that was in there this is 50 year old machines and never had the oil drained out of it I'm sure uh, just good quality motor oil this this pump does not get lubrication from the engine it, it will seize up so take care of it, it should treat you pretty well alright you guys thank you and God bless